Uh, that point is? The point is, um, it's been a seven-day cycle. And in seven days, we've actually experienced something that deep in the back of each one of our insecurities, we, we held a certain kind of fear of the capability of being unstable, you know, emotionally for uh, the fear of being uh, uncapable uh, of dealing with uh, transition, death, change, you know, um, kind of like, you know, uh, having a good pet for, you know, years and years and you grew up or planting a tree when you were a little bitty kid and, you know, now you're 32 years old and you're selling the house and the first thing they do is cut that tree down. Uh, but this is more deeper. This is like, uh, come on, help me with this. Where was I? Short-term memory should say, a motherfucker. Like, no, um, before that, earlier than that. Huh? The human, okay. the human aspect. Come on, man. <laughs> you, you wasting time on film. Oh, my bad. Okay, so you caught me off guard, see? Therein lies so this. Change. Change, yeah, you know? okay, all right. Stop, check this out. Therein lies the connection. It's kind of like uh, my biggest complaint with most people is I tend to uh, adapt a who's on first kind of, uh, you know, connection with them. You're saying one thing, and I'm going, no. Who's on second? What's on first? And it doesn't really matter because who, what, when, how, and whatever are all playing ball. You know? And it would be simple to just go, oh, really? Okay, I get it. Who's not on first? Who's on second? What's on first? You know, I don't know who's on third. You see what I'm saying? Uh, um, I love that. <laughs> the human aspect of our evolution, or at least the understanding of it, is that uh, at this point in time, it's best for you to basically embrace uh, whatever feels uh, uncomfortable or dysfunctional or shameful or whatnot. Because, transition. yeah, transition. You know, it's kind of like... Uh, Going with the flow, surfing, or like being, you know, uh, shipwrecked or something like that, or set out to sea or something, you know, and not only do you have no way of putting your feet on dry land, or, you know, directing which way you're going to go, but you got this moon doing some funny stuff that's, you know, also affecting that. And you, at that point, realize you really honestly have absolutely no control. The only thing you can do at that moment is start documenting that just in case you run into it again. Deja vu. Yeah. At this point in time in life, a lot of people are starting to feel like they have more deja vu's about things that don't sound comfortable enough to think about and that's worldwide will turns 
Okay. Same move. Go ahead. Okay. Because I also thought the Deja Vu could also be something that you would have in the back of your subconscious or maybe that you have to dream something and it's back there and then when you think about it again you'd be like, oh wow, well, I've been there and done that. But yeah, so what that. is the, uh, what is the op opposite of Deja Vu? Deja Vu is a reoccurring memory having been there before what is the one when you can uh, when you uh, you have one of those moments where you've been there before but it's but you thought about it way back then but it happens later on yeah that's what I'm talking about you feel what I'm saying that's yeah. different than deja vu going backwards it's, it's like you know you say something and then all of a sudden that shit happened and then you get mad, kind of like people who play the numbers. Girl, I was sitting there telling myself I should play by license plate number. And you know I didn't play it. Girl, you know every time you do, you do that all the time. I know. You know, girl, if you ever get that right, you know, you write your own ticket. And they spend the rest of their lives spending all of their money trying to gamble and missing the number because they ain't in tune with their own talent more than they just got an excuse and just like to do it anyway and it helps the school out and it's only a couple of dollars. No. Uh, it ain't that simple. Unless you're trying to stay simple. And that's okay in America right now. But um, if you're going to be anything else of a world value, you really honestly going to have to kick your game up. And this ain't a black thing or a white thing or a Jew or a Muslim or a Hindu thing. This is really honestly some straight up and down brass tacks. I'm the same person all around the world. But in America, I'm something different to some people just because they can get away with telling me who the hell I am to them. I ain't got to even be passing through. I would never let you be with my daughters. Dude, you got some ugly children. I'm not even into that kind of thing. Why are you sitting there being, oh, you scared? It's like that boondocks thing. You can't have my booty. I don't want your booty, dude. Stop. God, man. I uh, am too much of a sadist sometimes. This is one of them. Um... What, what was the title of this one? Come on, man. I just remember the part of how you were saying people were going through. You started it with the part of how people were going through different things now. You okay, know? okay. All right. I'll, I'll take it and run with it from there. Let's see okay. how much time I got. Uh, that's the uh, key to this whole thing. It's not about uh, the imagery of, you know, what you're seeing. It's about the uh, possibility of what you're missing. Sometimes it's more important for you to take a bet that you're more calibrated to guide yourself through whatever comes forth in your life. And whatever you feel more deserving or worthy of, there's absolutely no reason why you can't have it. But it's a worldwide perspective. It's like, and what? You know? It's because you want to live in the mountain or the valley or wherever for the rest of your life don't mean that, you know, it's not going to require you to get into the world game. 
I got a house in Denver, but man, I travel 200 years, 200 days a year, so I barely see it. Not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing, in theory, because they own property. But it's a bad thing, in theory, if you're talking to people who are, you know, being told that that's where they're predestined to be, if right. they're going to be something, you know. They'd be like, hell, man, there are more people that are, uh, you know, underachievers just because, well, hell, man, if all I got to do is get a seat, I can do that standing on my head. And it's not the first 20 years that uh, really matter. It's the next one after that. First 20 years, everybody rather goes through hell, goes through life, goes through schooling and all that other stuff or military or something like that. But it's the next one out when all of a sudden now, you know, um, uh, real toxin, you know, actually can rate you uh, the same allowance, you know. You can be an engineer because, you know, you've been an engineer for a very, very long time. When somebody else can come straight out of engineering school and swear up and down that they should actually have your position because, God damn it, what do you know about engineering? I built a whole lot of buildings and none of them have fallen down. What have you done? Well, I did a thesis. It was mentioned in this magazine. Oh, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not for long. Well, if that's your if that's your mindset, you're not gonna be here long, son. <laughs> you know, um, this is still different because you know, I mean, we had that uh, meteor shower, kind of like the uh, heavens was uh, crying. For, you know, are the new inductees. You know, for a minute, I was sitting there going, Oh, Pops is trying to doggone already get to paradise so when Aretha Franklin come, he can get a hold of her. Okay. Wow. Man. Uh, I'm Alpha Master Pimp, sir. He's the active dominant. An upper metaphysical ghetto Sufi master in advanced training in hell. That's all. 